Over the years you must have heard about the downfall of many companies due to wrong business model corruption changing economic conditions internal politics executive changes and bad management but one company that has seen all this together and still is there is WeWork WeWork is a company that glorified itself as the future of office spaces is the perfect example of silicon valley hype a company that had its presence in every continent around the globe its offices were 21st century sleek designs with all modern amenities like private offices and suites conference rooms wellness centers high speed internet on site cafes with coffee stations and free beer it was serving the new generation of tech companies startups and freelancers a company that was once valued at 47 billion dollars is now struggling to survive the stock price plummeted by more than 99% and in the last quarter the company suffered a loss of almost 400 million dollars and warned that it could go bankrupt this is the story of the most overvalued startup of recent times weaver the story of weaver starts in 2008 when adam newman shifted to new york after serving in the israeli navy adam rents an office in new york to start his business but soon he realized that there was some unoccupied space in his office that he could rent he then talked with his landlord and after doing some refurnishing he started giving it for rent to small businesses and freelancers in brooklyn he named this business venture green desk the business was going profitable then the landlord offered him another empty building to operate with a similar business model after 2 years in business in 2010 adam sold green desk to his landlord for 2 million dollars and with the same money he started a new company from scratch in the soho district in new york city and viva was born soon viva started growing and within 6 months adam got funding of 17 million dollars and within a year viva doubled in size in 2013 viva became a unicorn with a valuation of more than 1 billion dollars in 2015 viva crossed a 10 billion dollar valuation and was named to fast company's 50 most innovative companies list by 2015 weaver started expanding in europe and then to india and china in 2016 followed by latin america in 2017 by 2019 weaver crossed 47 billion dollar valuation the same year company changed its legal name from weaver to we company and filed for an ipo now if you look closely weaver was actually a traditional real estate company that was renting office spaces but its founder adam newman was a smart guy who knew that real estate won't lure the investors so he marketed the company as a tech startup claiming that viva would change the way tech companies work with claims like collaborative office spaces where startups can find its co-founders over a coffee and can hire employees from next door this hype was sold and a real estate company became the tech startup funded by the brilliant investors like softbank who invested 12 billion dollars in weaver but no money or hype can save the shaky businesses on paper weaver had the perfect business model to lease shared office spaces around the world the company finds and rents buildings in young densely populated areas from property owners weaver then signs a long term lease with the property owners and updates everything from inside like creating different office spaces adding updating furniture and creating cafes and community spaces once office spaces are ready weaver then subleases them to other companies or freelancers for significantly higher prices on a daily or monthly basis as of 2022 weaver was present in more than 700 locations in more than 30 countries if you see there are a few benefits to weaver's business model first from the property owner's perspective Weaver is a good deal due to the long term lease and high fixed cost agreement. It's easier for property owners to have a single contract for a fixed period rather than leasing it for a short time with multiple tenants. Second, from the tech startup's perspective, generally property owners are not interested in short term leases and those who do also don't rent it to the startups as there is a high risk of startups going out of business. But Weaver promotes the startup culture. They do short-term leases and also provide flexible spaces as per the headcount. Third, shared space. In traditional big tech companies, amenities are most underutilized, and startups don't have much. But Viva found a middle ground by sharing amenities. Their cafes, coffee stations, conference rooms, and private offices are shared. They also provide a collaborative culture between companies, 
working in the same locations. It gives an opportunity for startup founders to hang around in the same location. In fact, Weaver claimed that 70% of its clients have done business with each other. All these advantages added to their value. And despite higher rental rates, Weaver was growing. Weaver was not a traditional landlord. They were the agent of new tech culture. They were not only serving the startups but also expanded to the enterprise. And by 2019, companies like Facebook, Salesforce, IBM, Bank of America, and Citibank had offices in WeWork locations. For the world, WeWork was one of the most innovative startups. But the truth was completely different. In reality, WeWork was another startup covered with investors' money, but bleeding from inside. From 2011 to 2019, WeWork was publicized as the hottest tech startup. But in September 2019, its IPO was postponed due to concerns from investors over its valuation. At the time of filing for IPO, WeWork was valued at 47 billion dollars. But after financials were disclosed, WeWork was worth only 10 billion dollars. The company was losing 200,000 dollars per hour, and in 2018 alone, lost a whopping 2 billion dollars. When scrutiny happened, it unfolded several lawsuits based on sexual harassment and discrimination based on gender and race. SoftBank, who was the largest shareholder in the company, fired Newman, and Sandeep Mathrani took charge of the next WeWork CEO. SoftBank still believed in WeWork's business model, but the timing of the transition was not right. Within one month of new CEO taking charge of WeWork, the COVID pandemic hit, and the world of tech changed completely. Remote work replaced the collaborative office spaces. WeWork was impacted immediately, and their revenue dropped significantly. WeWork also didn't waste any time and fired two third of its staff and shut down several locations. Major cost cutting happened throughout the firm, including cutting down on free beer and drinks, which once was a major part of their sales pitch. But these efforts actually helped them survive during the pandemic. After spending almost two years of recovery. Finally, Viva went public in October 2021. It was believed that the post-COVID era would be a new chapter for Viva to accelerate the hybrid work culture, as many companies will now go with flexible office spaces with employees coming in two to three days a week. But Viva made it wrong again. In reality, after COVID, shared spaces became less popular. Most startups and small-scale companies went remote forever, and large enterprises were never the actual consumers of WeWork. For big tech companies, WeWork was good for the short term only. For example, when they want to enter a new geographic location, but large companies always prefer going with the long-term leases with traditional landlords. In May this year, Sandeep Mathrani also resigned as the CEO of WeWork, and David Tule took charge as the interim CEO. Last quarter, Weaver announced a net loss of 397 million dollars, with revenue of 877 million dollars, and also warned of possible bankruptcy. As of September 2023, Weaver has a market cap of just 170 million dollars, with its stock price declined by more than 99 percent in less than two years. SoftBank CEO Masayoshi Son said, "It was foolish of me to invest in Weaver. I was wrong." But if you see closely, it's not a flaw of the business model of WeWork. It's a flaw in the operating model and bad timing. Shared spaces will be a thing for many decades to come, but WeWork was not able to execute it well. But with all this, one person who remained profitable was its brilliant co-founder Adam Newman. Brilliant because he understood on time that the ship was sinking. While he was CEO, Adam was already buying real estate outside WeWork for his personal investment. While leaving WeWork, he received around 1.7 billion dollars and remained as a consultant with an annual salary of 46 million dollars. He is now in charge of revolutionizing the residential housing industry with his new venture, Flow, which is a unicorn already with a valuation of more than 1 billion dollars. Andreessen Horowitz, the prominent venture capital firm, has invested 350 million dollars in Flow, as they see Adam as a visionary leader. who revolutionized commercial real estate well it's a strange world we live in where failed ceos are visionary leaders let us know what you think about wework do you think that wework has any scope of survival now let us know in the comments below and definitely subscribe to the channel this is an extremely small channel and your support will help me with the youtube algorithm thank you